This is the first video I'm filming with my new hair, so I hope you excuse if I'm sitting here swishing it all the time. Hi everyone, welcome back to Linda Libra Luca. This is a follow-up video to one I did last month where I talked about the difference between dry and dehydrated skin and yeah, if every skin basically needs a moisturizer. So if you haven't um, watched this video, I'll leave a link up there and you can catch up so you're up to speed because today we're talking solely about humectants. What are they? How do I um, recognize them? And yeah, how much do I need? Which one do I need? What do they actually do? To start, humectants are like little magnets that attract water. They are in the upper layer of dead keratinocytes. They are between them and then in the epidermis and in the dermis. And they attract water and leave your skin plump and well hydrated. There are several of them. They occur in the skin naturally, which is why they're called natural hydrating factors or NHF, and they can be applied topically. The amount, the absolute number of natural hydrating factors your skin has is genetic, so some skins are more prone to dehydration than others, but lifestyle plays a huge role in dehydrated skin. So not only the number you have is given, but you can either increase or decrease it by lifestyle choices. Smoking, living in a harsh and cold climate, in a windy climate, uh, over exfoliating, all that can lead to a loss of humectants, but more in the video I did last month. Humectants are hydrophil, which means they attract water and bind water. And they attract the water both from the atmosphere and from the deeper layers of our body. And this is where a common myth comes in that I want to address today. The myth is that if you use a humectants and live in a dry climate, it will actually dehydrate your body because it will attract the water from deep down and leave it on the upper layers of the skin to evaporate. And even if there is a small quantum of truth, which is the case for most myths, this is not entirely true. If the humidity in the atmosphere you're living in is below 70 to 80%, Humectants will always draw water up from the deeper layers of your body. I live in Germany, it is usually not 70 to 80 percent humidity out there, so usually humectants in my skin will draw some water from the atmosphere, uh, but the majority from the deeper layers in my skin. And you know what? That's no problem, because the water in my, the deeper layers of my skin is replenished from my blood vessels. And I can replenish the water in my blood vessels by drinking. Cheers. There's always more water in my body than there is in the atmosphere. So you don't have to worry about the humectin dehydrating your body in the long run. That is, if you drink a sensible amount of water. And that ties in with myth number two. If you drink five liters per water, your skin will look much better. That's not true. If you drink five liters of water per day, you'll have to pee a lot more often, but it will not affect your skin. If you drink a sensible amount of water, like 2 to 2.5 liters a day, water, not coffee, not black tea, nothing dehydrating, then your body has enough moisture to replenish what the humectants need in the skin. This is, of course, depending on the amount of activities you have. So if you do a lot of sports, if you sweat a lot, you need more water than that. But for someone like me, living in a European climate, two to two and a half liters are perfect for keeping my skin supple. And drinking a lot more will not lead to noticeable improvements in my skin. And Kind of Steven did a whole article with all the scientific background on that. I will link in the description box. Which are these so-called natural hydrating factors that sit in our skin and help it look plump and youthful? They are amino acids or peptides. Peptides are essentially two or more amino acids linked together. There is hyaluronic acid, there is glycerin, there is lactic acid. And yeah, you might wonder here, why am I mentioning lactic acid here? Because it is usually known as an AHA. This is because lactic acid has several properties. It is an AHA, it has exfoliating properties if the pH is right. 
If you have a low pH, it will be exfoliating. If you have a higher uh, pH, it will be hydrating. So if it's in the pot of moisturizer, you usually don't have to worry about it exfoliating your skin, a thing that I only learned recently because I was wondering why so many moisturizers contain lactic acid. There is sodium PCA, there are sugars like sorbitol. Sugars are bad for your skin if you consume them, but they're great for your skin when you apply them topically. There are anorganic ions like magnesia, like calcium, like all that, which is why the mineral-rich mud some brands like Morovicha use is helping your skin be hydrated because it replenishes those. And there are things like glucosamine, urea, uh, creatine, and all that. These are the things that can naturally occur in your skin in various levels. So if you have lost some of them, if you want to replenish them because you feel like you have too little for your skin's needs, maybe because you've overexfoliated and lost some, maybe because you have been using too harsh a cleanser, maybe it's just because your skin is genetically prone to dehydration, then um, there are many that you can apply in product. There are over 800 humectants that are used in skincare. So of course, I can't give you a rundown of all of them. The ones you see the most are the ones that are identical to the natural hydrating factors we have in our skin. The one that you have probably heard the most of is hyaluronic acid. And hyaluronic acid isn't the same as hyaluronic acid. There are different um, molecular weights. And this is a really important fact that you should always have in mind when you talk about humectants. There is no absolute strength. Some companies claim that their humectant is 300 times as potent as, let's say, hyaluronic acid. It depends on several factors. Yes, there is an innate strength in humectants, the amount of water it can attract, but it also depends on the way it is applied, the depth that it can penetrate into your skin, on external factors like what's the atmosphere like and how much water is there in your body. So the most potent humectant won't keep your skin hydrated if you're thirsty in the Sahara Desert. But back to hyaluronic acid, it comes in different molecular weights and the smaller the molecule, the deeper the penetration into the skin. So the really heavy in molecular weight hyaluronic acid will sit on top of your skin while the other ones will gradually penetrate deeper. So many companies offer a mixture of hyaluronic acid molecular weights so you have your skin hydrated through all the layers. Others that are commonly used are sodium PCA, lactic acid, glycerin, propylene glucol, which is not an alcohol like alcohol denat, even though it's called glycol and sugars like sorbitol. These are the ones that I would recommend you look out for if you look for a product with humectants. In the comment section under my last video, people asked for recommendations, product recommendations um, with these specific ingredients. And I'm happy to help, but keep in mind, I can only recommend what I have tried or what I have read about. And there is a ton of hydrating uh, primers, most moisturizers, all that out there. So um, the ones that I picked to mention is one is by La Cura, just to show you that there are some that are focus mainly on um, humectants. And this one contains hyaluronic acids in several molecular weights and not much else. It isn't widely available because it is Alizut's own brand, so you only can get it if there is Ali. And it's a kind of sticky, cheap, budget-friendly um, serum that does just that. Hydrate. Another one that is more widely available is by The Ordinary and it's their hyaluronic acid 2% plus vitamin B5. If your skin is dehydrated and dry, you will need some other products as well, some emollients and obtrusives, and I'm going to talk about them in more depth in the next video. If you have any further questions, please leave them in the comments below. Please share humectant rich serums, essences, whatever that have helped you a lot. And yeah, subscribe so you don't miss any further videos. I'm going to see you all very soon with another one. Bye!